and we are rolling what's up everybody i got a few topics here some 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 nuggets some interesting observations um the first one is on the devil's comet the devil's comet is going to be seen during the time of april 8th solar eclipse they named it the devil's comet because it has two it looks like it appears they have like two horns on it but I just wonder if it's Revelation 12, 12. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil has come down to you with great wrath. Okay? And we all know we're not appointed to God's wrath. God does not appoint us to his wrath, so that's why there's the exodus. And that's why there's people who are kept out of that hour. And we will be able to navigate through these waters during this time of trouble not all of us many many will it'll be time to go home for for some that they'll be will be killed but could it be that we are about to embark on this this chapter now and that kind of lines up with the red heifer which is another subject you know the red heifer they're saying that they they got with the sacrificial altars complete they got the calves they need to to start the sacrifices and as we all know the abomination of desolation there's kind of a a sequence of events that takes place okay the the temple the israel is invaded it's a military invasion always has been in daniel and maccabees and estrus and anywhere else you could find things revolving around the abomination of desolation it always seems to happen around Hanukkah but uh, just saying that could the devil be coming down to us at the time uh, where yeah they they so so it's a military invasion and they stop the daily sacrifices that's what it says they should stop the sacrifices and go into the temple so they're raiding, they're raiding. This is when people are going into captivity, this is when people are fighting back with the sword. And uh, this is when people need to flee into the wilderness, okay? This is when the time of trouble starts. Great tribulation, okay? It's going off the scriptures. And um, he stops the sacrifices. And then, you know, he would exalt himself above God and as God. And, speak great blasphemies to those who dwell that's revelation 13 and second thessalonians 2 it's in daniel right it's all over the place um and maybe guys just maybe this will be iranian iran iranian and it's because it says that one beast gives over the power to the second beast and i wonder if you know the, out of the ten kings, we know one of the kings is the little horn. There's ten horns, seven heads, the seven you know uh, with seven diadems, right? The, the, the heads are nations. This is in Revelation. The horns are the kings. This is also in Revelation. I probably should have strapped that up, um, but my delivery is not that far. So, <laughs> so anyway. Um, you know, like, so in other words, the dragon and the bear are obviously going to be doing, you know, the foot, the footwork would be the, the, the Russian bear doing the footwork, ground combat, you know, in ground invasion, ground doing America. The dragon would be the one helping, probably orchestrating, coordinating, and also doing the invasion as well. But like, as while this is happening, while this is crippling us, the Middle East finds a power, you know, a moment of opportunity to do what they have to do. And they'll rule over that area. And Russia and China will have to take care of, you know, they'll be occupied with the United States. But they'll, and they'll have uh, Iran and the, uh, all the other Muslim nations, the leopard, the spots on all, all the different Muslim nations, take care of the Middle East. You know what I'm saying? Just a theory, just something to put out there. Um, 
and we can, I can keep talking about this, but I have a few other topics. Uh, so Baltimore, this morning before I left the house, I saw that the uh, a bridge in Baltimore has collapsed. And this reminds me of a few years ago when our we were starting to see our infrastructure really fall apart. And we were also starting to see our military fall apart. We were having, we had a ship somewhere in the Middle East that went down and an Iranian ship had taken all of our soldiers, all of our Navy and had them like hostage, like, like took them hot, like, you know, it was like a rescue, but seized them. They seized our soldiers. I don't know if you guys remember this, but our ship went down and our soldiers were apprehended by Iranians. And I'm pretty sure uh, we got them out of that. But it was also during a time when our our F-15s, our F-22s, F-35s, I don't remember. They were like, they were being rendered non-operable. Like a lot of these things are garbage. A lot of these things are ancient, guys. You know, we bang on our chest like King Kong. We show our feathers like the rooster or the peacock. These are ancient, the art of war, intimidation. You know, appear to be strong when you're weak and appear to be weak when you're strong. And we push and we shove to intimidate. And this is this is gang culture too. I mean, this is stuff, this is just, this is just the art of war. It's just, uh, we're, we're trying to make it appear a certain way, but it's out of fear and paranoia. And yeah, we will do some crazy-ish, some craziness to get our point across and to have the other guy back up. We will flex, we will we will pull out these, we'll do everything to make it to where there's no static. Like we, we're, it's a weird, uh, and it is a roll of the dice because it could backfire on you. It, you know, if someone wants to pull your card, call your number and, and and check you out then you got to go the distance and now you know it, it, it went from trying to intimidate or whatever to, into full-scale combat but these are the oldest methods in the book of and that's what we're doing man we're just trying to make things appear a certain way that aren't and we know we're, we're crumbling we're falling apart and um, you know you have to ask the question uh, what that Baltimore Bridge are these, are these, you know, are these judgments from God uh, that I, you know, I'm not going to heal your land. You're on your own, uh, like a father who's, who's who's disobedient kid wants to be left. Hey, okay, fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna be out of the picture. Then I'm gonna leave you alone. I'm not gonna pick you up when you're stranded. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna come help you when your car breaks down. I'm not gonna, you know, zell you 20 bucks when you're starving like Marvin and you got no food for lunch or whatever. You're on your own. That's what that's the way you want it. It's the way you're gonna get it and I think that's where we're at you know and I will heal your land when you come back to me and when you when you when you realize who's who uh, so but then you have to also you know judgments from God yes but also did our friends from abroad have anything to do with this there was a video last night that I watched I forget his name Anthony something or other this guy releases like two videos a day. I'm pretty sure you're all subscribed to him. He's got the big, the beard. And he's like, this is the big one. <laughs> Every video, like this, this is it. You need to know about this. This is what's going down, yo. But he released a warning that the White House is saying, signing executive orders and issuing out warnings to America to get ready for attacks on our infrastructure. As I continue watching this video last last night, it was more pertaining to cyber attack, you know, cyber hacks, and more of a, a electronic grid situation, not so much our, our, our concrete brick and mortar. But, you know, we can't forget the old school brick and mortar infrastructure like bridges and like buildings and you know, can these people have a hand in, you know, 
sabotaging our infrastructure, destroying our infrastructure. You know, guys, if we can't stop a, a, a group, a mob of kids from running into a Macy's and, and doing smashing grabs in the jewelry department, what makes you think we can monitor and stop somebody creeping around on a bridge from time to time? You know, maybe cutting things with a sawzall, you know, or removing a nut here and a bolt there and just making the thing like we're not we're not uh <laughs> there's it's free reign right now people are doing what they want to do man people are doing what they want to do with no consequences you know and there's not a, there's just not enough eyes in the sky Re, you know regardless of what the the, the 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 movies that are put out like eagle eye and all these this propaganda to keep you fear stricken and thinking that they're watching every little move they're not bro they're not again the art of war if we can make them think we're watching them then we've won half the battle if we can make them think that we have you know robotic dogs and and wasp drones that dude do you know how many robotic dogs we really have bro the, from the Boston Science Institute, whatever that is, like, you only got a few on deck, man, and you can't deploy them out to everybody, you know, it's, you got some robotic stuff, you got some drone, like, that could look like wasp or something, but you really think that they have enough of these things to, 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 uh, unleash on a, uh, naughty, a naughty, uh, citizens who are, you know, doing their own thing, and finally, you know, had it had it up to Wick's end and, and saying, hey, you know, if you want it, come get it. Like, we're done with this. We're fed up with this, you know. There's not enough of them. There's not enough tech. There's not enough hands-on. And they know this. So they, again, you know, they will continue propagating, putting out all these, like, things where it's like, dude, we, we're being watched. They know we're not, bro. Do you know how many phone calls and text messages when I would, like, when we were partying and we were buying shrooms and acid, nobody's watching. People selling, selling these. People doing all kinds of. And you might argue, well, yeah, man, that's what they want. They don't. They leave you guys alone. They're just after the people who are righteous. Or I doubt it, bro. Like they're not watching. They're not there. They don't have enough. What are you gonna? What are you gonna do about it? And and, and that's that's the next thing. What you gonna do about it? Okay, yeah, we're trying, we're trying to get high tonight. We're, we're we're getting some, you know, some acid, and we're gonna we're gonna fry our balls off, and and you know, and yeah, it's a so and so selling this, and so and so has got that. You know, what are you gonna do? What what is that going? What is that going to? What are the consequences? Not even you can't even take me to jail for half this stuff. And if you do, I'll be out in a couple days, bro. It is like this. It's to the point now where. They have to just, you know, it's all it's all psyop, man. But I've totally digressed on this one. Speaking of, that that's gonna let me roll into my next subject. Actually, I made a video recently um, regarding. I'm trying to be more careful on these these things so they could be seen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, this stuff right here. So. There's, there's a lot of guys who wear t-shirts with flags on them and with black coffee and with the tools that we need and deserve on you know and they got bumper stickers on their car and they're announcing to the world that this is what I'm about and this is this is what I got and don't mess with me you know that's well, guys, you're putting, you know, those people are, you know, good for them for not living in a state of paranoia and fear because not, I don't either and no one should. And, you know, they're putting it out there. That's great. But there are consequences, my friends. You have to watch out for the criminal element that is around you every day that you can't see. Because they look like me. They look like you. 
Like, they're not always going to be dressed up like gang members and on, on full blast. And you're going to be observing these people in your day. Bro, a lot of these people are ex-gang members, been in prison. Been, I mean, a lot of people rehabilitated. A lot of these people have changed. They've grown out of it. Um, there's a lot of people who have the criminal intelligence, bro. And they gather intel just like anybody else. They make observations just like anybody else. And that comes from the street life and, and the paranoia that, that, that criminals live with, you know, trying to stay alive in these neighborhoods, especially if you are coming from gang culture, okay? So when I see somebody rocking these shirts and rocking these bumper stickers, I'm just like, bro, you're, you're, all I got, you know, and I released this video and I had to remove it because I don't want to dox anybody. I feel like I was, uh, um, there was some, there, I was trying to get his bumper sticker and I think there was more that I got on that film that didn't need to be on there. So I got rid of the clip. Weird to me, by the way, how it got 800 views, but like only four comments and like 20 thumbs up. This, this thing is so rigged, dog. They don't even hide it anymore, bro. But it's all good. It's all good. But guys, you know, uh, and a lot of uh, some of the comments were, "Yeah, well, we why should let you know come get it or whatever." Like, you don't you don't understand, man. Uh, I I, I want to <laughs> these big uh, burly white men with these big old beards and trucker caps, dude. I want to explain something to you, man. Gang members aren't afraid of you, dog. Dude, you're not scary to nobody. You're not scary to the hood. You're not scary to the streets, bro. You might be scary to other white people. Or if you're like 13 deep, you know, you and your partners, like they like four pickup trucks, pickup trucks deep, then that's that might be scary because gangs are only afraid of other gangs. Okay? But 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 we come from a world where, where we roll up three, four cars deep. Cars packed with homies, and every homie ready to jump out of the ride and start dumping. Nobody's afraid of jail, dog. Nobody's afraid of prison. Nobody thinks they're gonna get caught. That's why crimes keep being committed because we never think we're gonna get caught. That's why we're down to do the crime. We, sometimes we premeditate and plot and chase the joint before we do that. We, we will have escape routes, escape plans, and a mentality you know, I'm running through every backyard. I'm jumping every fence. I'm hiding under every tree. I'm 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 jumping in the dumpster. I'm going down the alley. You know, if the helicopter has his light, guys. I come from neighborhoods where helicopters would search for the big old searchlight that would light up your house and the neighbor's house. The whole backyard lit up. These helicopters flying around looking, and people, dude, like. It's, once that once that happens, it's hard to escape that because they that searchlight is so big, the par the parameter. But I'm getting off topic again. But all I'm trying to say is you're not scaring nobody. That ain't scary to the to 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 young gang members, bro. Like, um, we're 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 down, we're down for our crime. And I say we because I'm I used to live that life, bro. And I'm telling you right now, nothing scared, nothing scared us except for other homeboys just like us from different neighborhoods that were doing the same stuff we were doing, and they were from, they were our enemies, and that was what scared us, bro. Like, cause we knew that these guys are going to dump in broad daylight. They are going to open up in broad daylight at the major intersections in traffic. Um, there, you know, there's going to be a rumble uh, in this Burger King, whatever it is, wherever you get caught slipping, bro. Like, they, it's going to be a big melee, bro. And it's, it's, it's not. Nobody cares about. And unfortunately, you know, the the patriot dude, he don't live that life. He ain't about that life. So he's he don't have he he's soft because his life is work for the family come home kick off your boots have your wife serve you some dinner relax maybe have a cold one you know you're too soft bro like you're not creeping and running you don't have warrants out for your arrest you ain't ducking and dodging the police you ain't ducking and dodging your rivals 
you're not in heavy gunfights, gunfire at night. Like, do these people who are going to end up coming for your stuff, that's where they're coming from. And when they, so when you slap bumper stickers on your cars and you wear these shirts, you're just saying, hey, I got what you want. I got what you need. And I got four, four houses down. I have one of those trucks. There's a pickup truck parked in a driveway. And he's, all he's done is let me know that there's another threat on this block besides me. I'm the biggest threat on this block. I'm the one who's nutty and who's down to do what I gotta do. But now I say, okay, that's, that's, that's an obstacle. That's something to look out for. That's a guy right there that I'm gonna, I, I got him locked in. And then everybody else in the neighborhood seems like they're just wandering through life with their eyes closed. So, you know, but thanks for the heads up, homie. Thanks for letting me know, dog. But you, what, what do you think he, when he drives past my house, he don't know nothing. He don't know nothing, bro. Do you see? It's the element of surprise, folks. I'm talking about the art of war again. So stop broadcasting and announcing to everybody because when SHTF rolls up, your house is a target like they're coming for your stuff bro they're not scared of you bro <laughs> they're not scared of you dog you're not scary bro you're a working man you're a family man and you're all about you know defense you're all about defending your shit well guess what dude there's folks that are about offense they come in on the offense dog they rolling up on you know and they're not scared of you bro so i just need to let you know that dog. these kids like i don't care if they're 15 16 17 those are the most dangerous those are the most active. I'm just trying to give you guys some game, dude. I don't want to turn this into like a gang video or anything like that. I'm really just trying to help you out, man. Like be be precautious and, and be stealthy about your stuff because we're in different times. Sure, you can wear those shirts and have those stickers in a, in a, in a world with law and order where, you know, you still got the police driving around. Yeah, but... You, you're up when opportunities come. And by the way, they'll still, they'll still hit you up during times of normalcy too. I mean, it ain't hard, dog. It ain't hard. All, once they know where you live, then you, you just, you just gave up all the cookies. But I took that video down. Okay. Uh, the red calf, Babylon. All right, guys. One more thing. Um, a cross reference. Another biblical cross-reference. <coughs> I apologize if this video went south and turned into gang, gang culture. L let me know in the comment section if that's like a huge turnoff to you. Or if it's appreciated even. If you appreciate the, the, the game, the game I'm giving you, you know, let me know. I don't want it to be like that. The next topic I wanted to talk about was a huge cross-reference, another cross-reference in Revelation. And... This one comes from a comment that was made yesterday on my other video from The Watchman. And he asked me, he goes, what is your thoughts on the wedding feast, the wedding supper of the Lamb, Revelation 19, 18? And if you know that verse, folks, that's the wedding supper of the Lamb that for some reason the pre-tribbers think is before the tribulation I don't I don't I don't get it we're eating the flesh of the kings and the mighty men and the destroyers of the earth <laughs> so when you read that passage it tells you exactly who these kings are um, and you could cross reference th those guys those kings are also found in the sixth seal revelation 6 uh, where it says um, and all the chief captains and all the mighty men hid themselves in the rocks and in the dens and said to the rocks, fall on us and hide us for the wrath of the lamb has come and who shall be able to stand. So, four eight oh, so hold on guys, all right. Hold up, where are my glasses? Okay, I'm in the wrong building. Um, so there they are obviously before they're they're being eaten by the saints being eaten by the um you know what i'm saying be, be rewarded this and i well where else can they be found they're also found in revelation 11 when the two witnesses 
are taken up into the clouds. This is the rapture, my friends. We know it's the rapture because it's also the time that the wrath has come and the time of rewarding the saints. So if you read that scripture, it says, and the, and the kings and the mighty and the nations were angry that the wrath has come and that the time of you know, rewarding the saints has come and that those who destroyed the earth, the destroyers of the earth. So these are your, your, your military men, these are your, these are your um, NORAD, the Pentagon, right? These are also your, um, above that, you know, your, your, your CIA operatives, your, your mercenaries, everybody, dude, your military, the kings, and all his men, you know? That's really the, the ones who are in charge of war, okay? How's that? And the, well, the ones who are in charge of the nations, how's that? Presidents, prime ministers, you know? Um, so there, you could find these people when they're alive and they're saying, oh man, you know, the wrath has come. Twice, they're like, the wrath has come. They're angry and upset and, um, and terrified in the sixth seal. But then we see we're eating their flesh and that's another, another cross-reference some, some people say is to Matthew 24, where you find the vultures gather, you will find the carcass. <laughs> they say that that's a direct, I've heard some people say that's a direct correlation to the wedding supper of the Lamb, the wedding feast of the Lamb. So, we, you know, and what, well, what do we see in Revelation 24? The sun darkening, the moon not giving its light, the stars falling. The angels gather the elect with a trumpet call from the four winds, right? So we see the rapture. We see the second coming of Jesus Christ. We see the rapture. And we see the wedding feast of the Lamb. With Where you see the vultures gather, you will find the carcass. So I think these are all cross-references. I don't know how or why pre-tribulation rapture folks keep talking about, We're going to the wedding feast. We're going to the wedding supper of the Lamb. How, bro? Like, have the chief captains and the mighty men, has the sixth seal. So, and again, you know, what are we talking about April 8th, guys? We're talking about, is that the sixth seal? You know, is that the Matthew 24? Is that the sixth seal, guys? That Before the day of the Lord, before the great and terrible day of the Lord, the sun shall darken, the moon will not give us light. Is this it? You know, we don't know. It looks like it's it. Oh, man. Dude, check this out, guys. I'm about to stop this video here. Okay, so Sales Daddy. This guy, his, his, his channel is called Sales Daddy. He has another channel called God Rules. And um, he puts out a lot of stuff on the economy I really like, as well as some biblical, just whatever, whatever is happening in, in the world, you know. But yesterday he put one out about the Devil's Comet and he was talking about the sign of Jonah, April 8th. And he was saying that the sign of Jonah, it wasn't necessarily eaten by a whale. He was eaten by this sea beast. There's a beast that's that's like half serpent. Guys, guys, this, and he was showing pictures of it. This is the beast of the sea, guys. This is what I found in Stellarium. When you go to Stellarium and you see Virgo with the moon at her feet, draped in the sun, the 12 stars of Judah and all that. And then you see like um, a, a Fiacus holding the, the snake next to her and then you see the i told you guys there's a sequence dude that goes right into 2024 so in 2017 it's virgo and you can move this thing you can move time and and go through it and you can see that the rider on the white horse with the bow you know like as in the four horsemen the rider who was given a crown they show it shows that we go through that and then right after that is Capricorn and Capricorn is the I, I interpret Revelation 13 the beast that spoke like a lamb or spoke like a dragon who had horns like a lamb and if you look at this thing it's half dragon and half goat it's like a and it has fins and it, and it looked just like what Cell's daddy was showing you like this is actually what ate Jonah like this is actually what ate Jonah not a whale it's not a big blue whale like like kindergarten Christianity draws on books for children in Sunday school, right? Like, and what do we do? We grow up to be 40, 50 years old. We're like, it's a big blue whale, you know, right? We need, like, we still on that milk. But 
during those times, this was what. Well, guys, after that, is the, as we go continue into time, dude, we go into Aquarius 2024. And that's the man pouring the bowls of wrath, dude. That's God's wrath, bro. That's why I always thought 2024 was going to be the end of the tribulation. And that's why I always thought that 2021 was going to be mid-trib. And you guys all know what happened in 2020. And, and then after that, after Aquarius, dude, it's the fish. It's Pisces, the age of Pisces. So it's like we're leaving the age of Aquarius. And, you know, what will be the signs of the end of the age, y'all? The Olivet Discord, the Sermon on the Mount, the, the verse. Oh, these are the verses that we recite over and over to each other. But listen to what it's asking you. What would be the signs of... Of the end of the age of your coming your coming and the end of the age and it goes from Aquarius back into Pisces bro the age of Pisces guys this isn't about astrology or astronomy this is about the Maseroth this is about the Maseroth that God created for some you know in it's in your Bible I think it's in is it in Job Job I forgot what verse, it, what what chapter is in, but he tells you, I made all these signs. I made Orion's belt. I made this, that, and the other. I could, you know, I I put the the rings around Saturn, bro. Like he tells you all these things. I I made this. I made that. This is me. This is my creation. So, so that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about the Maseroth. And another thing I want to say about these signs is. When John said in Revelation that, behold, I saw I saw a war in heaven, and then later on you see him say, and, and I saw a war on earth, and we know that there's two, there's going to be a war on the earth, guys. We you know that's stupid. We see that coming right up, and but then we also know that there's a war in heaven, right, where Michael throws a dragon. Down. Guys, what is is that? What he is that? Is that what he was talking about when he says, I saw a war in heaven? He's talking about what we're seeing on the Stellarium program. I know most of you are saying, well, no, no, duh. Yeah, of course it is. But no, no, no. Listen to what I'm trying to say. Like maybe there's not really going to be a woman who flees into the wilderness per se. That was just what's happening in the heavens. The imagery that we see on Stellarium is the woman Who's about to give birth to the dragon and and all this, that, and the other. And then she has to flee into the wilderness where she's helping. Now, I know that that's a direct correlation with our mid-trib. Let those in Judea flee into the mountains. I, I get that. But what I'm, what I'm saying here is that, and then I saw another beast who came out of the sea. Like, that's what he's talking about, bro. He's talking about all the stuff we're able to see in Stellarium. And yes, and then there's a war on the earth. We are, we're having plenty of that right now. It's not here yet, but it's it's all everywhere else is there. Okay? So, and like, bro, like, like we could actually see, bro. We could see it. John, and they knew that Jesus, the Lord knew that we would have technology. Knowledge shall increase and information shall abound and people will go travel, you know, to and fro in the last days and they knew we'd be able to figure this stuff out you know those those blood moon to blood moon tetrad you know marked builds and what led us into the whole revelation 12 sign of sky and then the first the august 21st eclipse like it's all coming together and you just have to wonder like when revelation 12 happened on september 23rd 2017 and nothing happened on the earth, and we're like, oh, what's going on here? You know, I'm kind of confused. But John, it happened already, dog. It happened. It happened in Stellarium. It happened, forget Stellarium. It happened in the heavens. These things are happening in the heavens, guys, and we're waiting for them to happen on the earth. But they're already happening in the heavens. So when you're reading Revelation, and you're reading John's vision, it's happening right now in the heavens. It's going past us, bro. Like, we already passed the um, Revelation 12 part. We already passed the Revelation 13 part, bro. We already passed the... We're going into Aquarius, pouring out the bowls of wrath. That's what we're about to be at very soon. And then we're going to be blah in Pisces, bro. The, the return of Jesus Christ. It's happening, dude. Everything in Revelation is happening. It's just happening up there. It's happening up there, guys. 
Revelation 12 already happened in 2017. The beast of the sea, the, the rider on the white horse, dog, that happened already, bro. With the bow, with no arrows. That was in 2021, 2020, 2021. Then 2020, 21, the beast of the sea. And then now, dude, we're approaching, 20, we're going into the, 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 the bowls of wrath and Aquarius, and then we're going to Pisces, bro. Like, can it be, dog? Can it be that we are about to see the second coming of Christ? We've been in the tribulation, folks. I'm not saying there ain't some stuff that still needs to happen here. It's going to happen, and that's what's freaky. That's what's scary, dog. We're, Babylon is about to go up in nuclear hellfire, bro. And it's going to happen so quick that things are really about to start happening now. But anyway, just a food for thought. I got a jam. Uh, hope you guys like this one. Share this if you liked it, man. I need people. It's the time is up, so I need. Before I didn't care. I was like, nah, who cares? Whatever. Whoever sees it, sees it. Whoever the Lord wants to see these videos, those are the ones who are gonna see these videos. I don't even care. You know, I'm. Nah, share it, bro. Get it out there. You know what I mean? I'm. I don't care. I'm not trying to grow this. Jam. There ain't enough time for all that. But, you know, I know that the the powers and principalities of the air are working against me on this thing right here, dog. If you catch my drift. All right, I got to go. Have a blessed day.